YouTube and welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to do a review of the Schubert C5 helmet, an SC2 comms unit. Bought these a few days ago from Two Wheels in Edinburgh, paid my own money for it and uh, ridden a few hundred miles on it so far. We just wanted to share some thoughts on it, some pros and cons that I've found in the short time I've had it. So let's get stuck in. This is the helmet itself. It's in the white, black and red colour scheme. Various different graphics available colour wise and also block colours. I think there's a difference of about £100 between the graphics and the block colours. Bit of background to shoe birth um, and me, I've always been an HGC and showy helmet wearer. Shoe births never fit in my head um, and I read that, I've always wanted one, tried on the C4, C4 Pro and things like that and they just didn't fit basically. So when I found that shoe birth were changing the way they make these helmets and the fit and finish of it, um, I thought I would try it on and um, it fits, it works really well. Um, so talking about fit, uh, I'm quite an oval head myself um, and as I said in the past these never really fitted but this one does. Um, the fit and finish as you'd expect from a £600 helmet is pretty good, it's amazing. Um, if we open it up you can see inside you've got various different elements, you've got your cheek pads and everything else, I think there's seven or it's either seven or nine different parts to the internal gubbings of the, the helmet itself um, and they're all washable, all removable, all velcroed in so there's nothing like flapping or loose like some of the other helmets you can get nowadays. Uh, cheek pads as I said you can all come in different sizes, I've got these replaced to uh, get slightly thicker ones um, but yeah it works really well um, in terms of closure system on this you have a ratchet like most of the modular helmets do just now but also you have a little velcro tab that goes across just to protect your chin um, against the ratchet system although I know a lot of people wear buffs anyway but it works quite well. One thing to bear in mind is where that, if I can hold it properly for you guys, where this ratchet system sits, it actually sits quite far back on the neck it's a little bit uncomfortable, but you get used to it. It's just something I wasn't, um, I'd never experienced before. But if, if you try it on, you either will like it or not, or be able to use it or not, basically. Um, in terms of fit, this is a medium, 57, and HGC, I'm a large, as I am in showy. Um, tried a large one on this and it was massive, it, the head was floating around inside so I went for the medium, it fits, it's nice and snug, a little bit tight in a couple of points but um, as with all helmets that will ease off. So fit and finish is good, um, nice and comfy, a little curtain at the top here as well, um, it does mean that the actual bottom here, I mean you've got a little skirt bit here and you've got an internal and an external piece um, it's just popped out again, um, but it does mean that it cuts down a lot of the noise and it's a really, really tight fit around your neck, which is fantastic for that noise and um, comfort and warmth in the winter. So moving on from there, if we talk about a wee bit about aerodynamics and ventilation. Um, it's Aerodynamic. There's not a lot of bits and bobs sticking off the edge of this. As you can see, the SC5 on the side is pretty, not very, very inobtrusive. But the ventilation, so at the front we have a massive vent that goes direct here, straight into the mouthpiece, um, straight into your mouth, this sort of area, um, which works fantastically well. Um, a little filter on the inside to stop any bugs and all that coming through. You've got a, uh, you can see here, a little ventilation here that goes straight, you can see a little air vents there, goes straight into the visor. On the top you've got ventilation again that this whole unit can pull off and the little filter that can be cleaned. You've got three positions, you've got shut which is uh, right at the front 
half open or full open yesterday I was riding around on it half open in the Scottish summer of 13 degrees and um, the air was it was brilliant, nice cool air all throughout the head rather than just hitting one point on your forehead so it kept my head nice and cool and the vents at the back help just pull the air out, no open or closing that which I think is, is fine. So we're talking about the venting into the visor itself. Um, as you can see there's tabs on either side so it can be used with left or right hand. The visor itself comes with if you can see that, Pinlock 120, which is one of the best Pinlocks you can get. And unlike a lot of other helmet manufacturers, this comes with it installed. So you don't have to faff about with these little screws and everything, trying to get it just right so it doesn't fog up and everything. I don't understand why more helmet manufacturers don't supply visors with the Pinlock installed. So. Hopefully this will be pretty good in those awkward conditions and stop everything misting up inside. Um, in order to get the visor off, there's two little clips on either side. Push them up, pops off itself. So um, that's the visor. One thing that is actually quite um, good about it, I thought this was a bit of a gimmick until I actually used it. So you can see here the visor is half up half down. I'll put my hand inside so I can control the helmet. Um, we're going to open the chin guard. It goes up, as you can see, locked in the top position. If we then pull it back down and lock it in the low position, the visor stays half open. So it remembers where it was before you put your chin guard up. I don't know how they do that. Um, and as I said, I thought it was a bit of a gimmick but actually having used it, I do quite like it. Round the visor, there's a really good seal, rubber seal, right along the top, right over to the edge here, and again, right down the bottom, all the way round. So, um, although I've not used it in the rain yet, I've no doubt it will be pretty solid and pretty secure, not letting the water get in. Um, and actually, looking at the top, I don't know if you can see, there's a little ledge here, um, which is fantastic because so many helmets, their visor goes straight down. So when you actually open it, the visor then gets caught on this bit here. As it happened with numerous helmets I've had and you get a little marking on the inside of the visor. So hopefully that won't happen. I just noticed that, that's actually quite good. Anyway, so that's the helmet itself. Um, the other thing about it, it does have internal sun visor that's controlled on the left, obviously. There is a little tab in there. Don't know if you'll be able to see it. Lights that you can adjust to reduce the height of the visor if necessary. It does come down fairly well. To me, it comes down to about here. Um, I did notice a couple of reviews where it said it might hit your nose. However, my nose is back here somewhere, side on. So it's nowhere near the front. I think you need a extremely large nose to actually hit it. Um, but yeah, works well. And um, nice smooth action. Positive stop at the bottom, smooth action and up. So that's the helmet itself. If you've got any questions and queries, drop them down in the comments below. And what we'll do now is we'll jump on to the SC2 comms unit. So um, with the comms unit, it's SC2 comms unit. It's in essence a Senna uh, 50S. It's got uh, your standard Bluetooth, but also your mesh technology. So the ability to pair with multiple riders um, and for people to drop in and out of groups without having to reconnect. There's two main, two main elements of this. You've got the remote control unit on the side that just slips in and has a little battery itself that lasts about 18 months. And you have the main control unit at the back um, with a USB-C power 
connector there and obviously main on and off switch. There's loads of videos online about how to install these. It literally takes five minutes. Um, if you start with the little rubber grommet here, pop that out, put the microphone in, pull off the tab, slide that in, pull the tab out for the to activate the battery, and then two little connectors, click that and that's it, done. It's really simple, really easy. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to use another comms unit on it. I'm pretty sure you will. Well, right. I think you can. However, the reason I'm saying I don't know if you want to or should is there is antenna and speakers that are pre-wired into this helmet as you get it without the comms unit. Um, hence the simplicity of actually the installation. So if you're buying the helmet, you get speakers, you get antenna, you get all the wiring in there. All you then have to do is put on, I think the SC1 will fit in this as well, as well as the SC2, which this is. Link it in and off you go. So if you had, for instance, a card or pack talk that I've used for years and stuck it on here or the new edge that's the magnetic connection to the base unit, if you put that on here and run the wires into the helmet, I don't know how you would link them to the speakers and then the microphone, you wouldn't use this because this links to this unit, you'd have to have another microphone that would then have to run through the internals. So it would get complicated. And I don't know how that would then affect the comfort of the helmet. If anyone has done that, anyone tried it, anyone wants to try it, knock yourself out. Um, as I said, I've used Cardo Pack Talks for God knows how many years. Um, and the reason I got this was some of the guys and a few of the riding clubs I'm with use Senna's more than Cardo's. Um, I'll still use the Cardo with the wife when I'm going away, but I'll probably use this if I'm out in one link up to those guys. Um, so yeah, first foray into Senna world. And um, yeah, it's probably a good time to talk about the functionality of it. As I said, it does everything a 50S does or a Cardo Pack Talk does. It's just a little bit more complicated, would be the way I'd describe it. Um, setting it up is relatively easy. Um, however, connectivity, I find a wee bit more tricky. Um, I'm used to just using the app and doing everything through the app to do it, um, which you can do with Senna, Senna or the Schubert app, actually. Um, if you scan the other person's QR code, you can set it up, but that's given that they have the same system as this. Otherwise, you have to then click into Bluetooth and connect it, which we did yesterday, and it worked fine. I um, haven't connected it yet through mesh, but um, going away to Wales in May, so hopefully some of the guys there will have mesh on Senna, and we'll see how that works. Um, but yeah, so uh, my first... Uh, reaction to it is it is more complicated than Cardo, but this is, as I said, first time we've used Senna. I'm sure it will get easier. One thing I will say in terms of speakers, as I said, they're pre wired. Um, they're not as good as the Cardo GBL speakers. GBL? Yes, Cardo GBL speakers. Um, in terms of clarity, in terms of depth of sound, or in terms of noise, in terms of lightness they are quieter and a bit tinnier. So if that's important to you, um, potentially what I'm going to do is look and get an upgrade for the speakers. Um, just bearing in mind, the only thing about that is the unit is £349. So it's a lot of money for something that isn't as good as its competitor, basically, in my view. Um, is it worth it? <sighs> I don't know. You're kind of stuck. If you buy the helmet, I think you kind of got to get the comms unit if you want to listen to music, talk to people, things like this, because, as I said previously, bolting something else onto the side of it and trying to do all the gubbins and wiring inside, <sighs> it's going to be difficult. And, yeah, 
we'll see we'll see how it goes um so yeah so all in all uh it is the helmet plus the comms 950 quid I did get a little bit of discount from two wheels because of one of the motorcycle groups I'm a member of, but it's a lot of money um, and it's not for everyone. Is it worth it? Don't know. We'll see. See how it pans out. Um, I've wanted one for a long time and um, certainly the helmet itself seems fantastic. Just see how things go with the comms unit and that. But, um, yeah, that's it. That's the helmet itself. Like it so far, albeit a few days that I've worn out a few hundred miles. Do a review and an update at some point in the future. But if you have any questions, queries, anything like that, drop the comments below. I'll gladly answer them. Um, and yeah, ride safe, take care. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.